Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of your favorite sports show, hosted by the University of Tennessee Sports Mecca. I am your host, Nicholas Stokes, and to my left is my amazing, legendary co-host, Jacob Potter. Amazing. How you doing Some today, man? Words. I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> the ball's covered. It's hard to beat that. Good yeah. little weekend. Okay. Gotcha. Good, cool little weekend. Kind of bad little weekend, you know. It was an all right little weekend. It was an all right little weekend. You know what I'm saying? An all right weekend for volunteer football since this. That is the area that we're starting this week's show. So let's go ahead and discuss it. This weekend, Saturday, September 29th, uh, our beloved Tennessee Volunteers lost to the number two Georgia Bulldogs, 38 to 12. In this matchup, there was a fun fact of the game. We got to tell you, Tennessee's defense was looking for the ball, forced fumbles after fumbles, but recovered zero as you watch this horrendous play as the Georgia Bulldogs score repeatedly and repeatedly. Here's Dante Swift swiftly moving into the end zone. Man, tell me what your take is from this game. I mean, there's a lot you could look at and see the positives. Uh, one of those things is that fumbles, is those fumble recoveries, because fumble recoveries are something that you see it time and time again. They're pretty much random on who recovers them. And so that's something that will even out for you over the course of a season. So I think that's a positive. The Tennessee was able to force so many potential turnovers versus mm -hmm. really one of the best two teams in the country. Right. And I also thought another big positive was Jared Garantano's play is here. We see a touchdown pass from him to Ty Chandler. Garantano was very efficient. He had a really effective day, and mm -hmm. for the first time this season, no turnovers. Right. He, he almost uh, well, was base, basically barely under 75% throwing. He was 13 for 21 with 143 yards and two touchdowns with no picks. I believe that's a good game for Garantano, and he's doing way better and improving every week. With that said, Tennessee now falls to 2-3 and three on the season and is now fifth in the SEC. East. Uh, let's talk about the press game. I mean, the post game press conference, though, however, with Jeremy Pruitt. He had some interesting words and even got a little emotional during the post game interview. Um, he had uh, to hold back some tears, to say the least, and said that we made the right step in the right direction as far as building our program. Botter, do you believe him? I totally believe with him. I think that Pruitt is doing really good things for this team right now. The fact that he was able to see the positives in what ended up being a pretty negative game, there were a lot of good things. I thought the defense played pretty well, all things considered, on all three levels. I think the I think Garantano, as we said, played well. Ty Chandler played very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, had only nine touches for a bunch of yards and, and uh, great yards per touch and the touchdown. We saw the passing, the receiving touchdown. I thought there were a lot of really good positives we could take from the game. Mm -hmm. The tackling was good. Uh, most cases. Yeah, uh, obviously, most some cases. of those touchdown runs are tackling wasn't good. But Will Ignant, Daniel Batuli both had good games at linebacker. I thought the pair of freshman cornerbacks played pretty well, all things considered. Alante Taylor and Bryce Thompson. Mm -hmm. And something that I really, really liked to see was Balaam Buchanan. Who's, here's a guy who's played a lot of cornerback this season. But now that Taylor and Thompson have started to kind of emerge as the team's two best shutdown corners, uh, what the defense has done is they've moved Balaam Buchanan, Buchanan to the star position, which is this sort of hybrid nickel corner free safety, where he can kind of roam the field, and he's free to be a playmaker. Right. And so I really liked that Balin Buchanan was doing that. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Nice take. Moving forward, um, we have a bye week this week, so the Tennessee Volunteer uh, football team can rest up because it's going to get even more intense uh, competition-wise <laughs> moving forward. Uh, after that bye week, we will see the Tennessee uh, Volunteers travel into Auburn, to play the number eight team in the nation at Jordan Harris Stadium. Ah, what's your opinion or your um, prediction for the matchup? Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to go super well for the Vols, but I do think uh, that Auburn is a worse team than Georgia is. Mm. And so I think, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball, and so I would be surprised if the Vols weren't able to slow down Auburn's offense at least a decent bit. I don't think it'll look like the Florida game did. I don't even think it'll look like the Georgia game did. I think that the defense was one of the few positives you can take away from that Georgia game, and I think that they, I think you'll be able to see that against a team like Auburn, who doesn't doesn't have the same skill position players mm -hmm. that Georgia has on offense. I got you. I do believe that the bye week is going to re-energize and maybe mm -hmm. even refocus uh, the volunteer camp. However, I don't know if it necessarily translate into. Um, victories moving forward. I do believe that their defense will be more poised and ready moving forward throughout this season, but I don't necessarily know if it will translate into victories. Um, after that, they'll be taking on the number one team in the nation, Alabama, for the third Saturday in October rivalry on Saturday, October 20th. Whew. 
they're going to take on Tua in them. Yeah, that, that one's not going to go great. I think <laughs> really any team that's played Alabama this season can see that because Alabama right now to me clearly looks like the number one team in the country. Clearly, obviously. You take the Alabama teams of the past that were able to win a title with Jake Coker at quarterback mm -hmm. and you put maybe the best quarterback in the country to a tag of at quarterback. That is so, so tough to defend because now Bama not only has that smash mouth offense with great running backs like Damian Harris and, right. Naj and Najee Harris, but they can throw better than almost any team out there. They still have that same Bama defense and they still have Nick Saban on the sidelines. And guess what else they have? options oh yeah literally Everywhere. options in every position on the death chart and I think it's just gonna be hard to stop them especially for the Tennessee team that is going through a lot internally and it's just gonna be a lot it's gonna be a a, a, a very um, tempting matchup to say the least and I think Tennessee is gonna have to come all the way out the bag like go all the way into their bag oh, yeah in order to even have a possibility of winning yeah and I don't think we should discount the game after the Alabama game either they go uh, they play South Carolina in South Carolina, mm -hmm. Will Muschamp, the South Carolina coach from his time at Florida and South Carolina, is 6-0 and versus the Vols. That is really, really not a great trend. It's something the Vols will have to look to reverse. South Carolina has looked susceptible this year. They just lost to Kentucky. So maybe this is the year that Muschamp's streak ends, but all things considered, that can't be a great sign for the Vols. Mm. After those three games, the schedule gets easier, but it's going to be tough. Mm. I doubt that the Muschamp uh, – yeah, I just doubt that we beat – I just doubt that we beat the Gamecocks. Anyway, moving forward, we're going to be back uh, right after this commercial break for some NFL football reviews and headlines. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. 